Okay, so this is my second talk. Um, and I'd like to talk about the work of Hart Simon and various generalizations. And um, the work of Hart Simon showed that in certain situations, so, you know, in the last lecture, we saw that the plateau problem, where you minimize area for a fixed boundary, um, could yield singular solutions. And Hart Simon showed that in some situations, you can perturb away the singularities. Okay, so let me just start. By, by drawing the picture of the Simon's cone. This is the Simon's cone. And if you remember, okay. And we've seen there's these surfaces, it's directed by Bombieri, Di Giorgi, and Giusti, that foliate the exterior regions of, of the Simon's cone. Okay. And so, we said, if you look at the ball of radius, the ball of radius one, then the Simon's cone has least area for its boundary. Okay. But the question is, what happens if you perturb the boundary a little bit? Maybe this singularity is here, but if you wiggle a little bit, then it, it, it goes away. And so the really nice thing about the Simon's cone is indeed, you can see that this is true. So if you perturb the boundary a little bit, let's call this lambda s plus. And remember we saw that lambda s plus as lambda goes to zero, converges to the Simon's cone. So lambda s plus intersect with the boundary of the sphere. This is very close to the boundary of the Simon's code. So you can imagine that what you've done is you perturb the boundary slightly and well, this is smooth. Okay. So this leads to the sort of the hope that maybe under a perturbation of the boundary data, the singularity is gonna disappear. Okay. So, but you, you have to be careful. Not Okay, and so right in, in general, we haven't we haven't proven that that you there always exists some perturbation that works, but it's definitely not true that that it's definitely not true that any perturbation is going to destroy the singularity because you can rotate. So if you rotate the Simon's code, the intersection of the sphere is perturbed slightly, but the singularity is still there. Okay. So the, to, set, to set the stage, I need to sort of specify exactly what sort of perturbations I'm considering. So uh, we'll be a little bit more precise. So. so I'm gonna consider a, um, a set omega set with finite parameter in Euclidean space. And then I'm going to assume that in the unit ball, so sorry, let me say that this set is omega. And I'm going to assume that this part solves. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that the, the part of the boundary of omega that lives in the unit ball solves the plateau, pro, pro, plateau problem with respect to its boundary. Okay. And so the plan is we're going to imagine choosing these types of perturbations.
OK, sorry about the notation. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we've perturbed the boundary to one side and solve the plateau problem. So in other words, we're going to assume that there's these sets omega j, which are strictly contained inside of omega. And omega j should still have the property that in the ball, they solve the plateau problem for their, for their boundary. But we're going to imagine that these sets are converging back to sigma as j goes to infinity. And so we have convergence. Okay. And so you see that in the in the, the case of the Simons cone, when we perturbed in one side, we did get smoothness. And so this is sort of the this is the setup for how I want to how we want to talk about one-sided perturbations. Okay. So the question is. Is sigma j more regular for j large? Okay. All right. So the what and what I want to talk about is Okay, and so what I want to talk about is, is work of Hart Simon, who gave a partial answer to this question. And the, the reason it's a partial answer is they assume all tangent cones to sigma are regular. Right, so um, if you remember, so at every point of a minimal surface, you can take you can take a tangent cone. It's zooming in, um, and when you do this, you uh, you you find a, a minimal cone. It may depend on the sequence, but we're gonna not gonna worry about that now. But we've seen that you can have, for example, a a cone cross a line, right? So a cone cross a line has a very large singular set because the whole line cross the origin is singular. So in the work of Hart Simon, you want to you want to avoid this possibility, and so you're going to assume that all tangent cones to sigma are regular. And so this in R eight, this okay. So in R eight, this this holds for any solution to the plateau problem, and we discussed this briefly in our in our previous lecture. Okay, so um. Let's simplify the pic the picture, but these simplifications are really not serious. So, um, the the you could either get away with doing something slightly different, or you could you could generate you could reduce to this case. So what I want to do is I want to assume sigma. So remember, sigma is the central minimal surface that we want to perturb to become smoother. Okay, so I want to make two assumptions. The first one is I want to assume that all, all singularities of sigma are the origin. So the origin is the only singular point in the unit ball for sigma. This isn't too serious because when you and sigma has isolated singularities, you can always zoom in and recenter so that this situation holds. And the other situation, the other thing I want to assume is that when you zoom in around the origin, right, these are blow-ups. Right, then I want that sigma limits to a regular tangent cone. And so regular just means that it has no singularities other than the origin. And that's what I, uh, that's what, that's the Hart-Simon assumption. And hidden in this assumption, I'm assuming that it, it's independent of the sequence. And in fact, we know that this does is true by work of Leon Simon, uh, when you have a regular tangent cone, it's unique, but in general, you don't really need to do this in the, in the argument and you could do something, argue slightly different. OK, so let's remember that we always want to talk about the inside. Oops. So 
So in addition to just talking about sigma, let's talk about the set omega, which is where it's, its boundary. And let me draw a picture. Okay, so here's sigma. This is the set omega. And what we want is that, let me zoom in. Well, sigma is gonna converge to the cone. And then the set omega actually is converging to the set on a fixed side, side of the cone. So those are our assumptions. Okay. So, and we also, sorry, let me also say that the, I think I changed colors here. These are the sets, these are the surfaces sigma j. So we've assumed that there are these, these other minimal surfaces sigma j that solve the plateau problem and they lie inside of Lega. Okay. All right. So this is the, the setup and the theorem, pardon Simon. So the theorem of Hart-Simon says that for J sufficiently large, the surfaces sigma J are completely smooth in a neighborhood of the origin. Okay, so the, the reason for restricting to the ball of radius a half is, is just technical and you just want to avoid talking about the boundary points. And so in an application, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be concerned about those other points. So what this really is telling you is that, that the singularity at the origin has been perturbed away. Okay, and so what I'd like to do in this lecture is discuss essentially the idea of the proof by Hart and Simon. Okay. And so the proof Okay. So by contradiction, let's assume that there exist singular points in for sigma j and in the ball of radius half. And then, so Allard, so you remember singular has to converge to singular. Okay, because Allard tells that if you converge to smooth, then you are smooth. So turning that around, singular converges to singular. So it tells us that xj must be converging to the origin. So then, so what um, we want to do is we set lambda j to be one over the norm of xj, and we're going to dilate by lambda j. So here's the picture. Okay, so what I want to do is I have these points xj on sigma j, which are singular, and they're converging into the origin. Okay, and I want to rescale by the distance between, from xj to the origin. And so when I do that, a lot of things are going to happen. So sigma is going to be approximately lambda j sigma is approximately the, the cone. Okay. Sigma j. 
lambda j sigma j. Well, this is this is going to be a, a different minimal surface on one side of sigma. Okay, and the the key point is that there is now so x j tilde singular. So this this uh, sigma j tilde, which is the rescaled sigma j. Now there's a singular point, a distance one from the origin. Okay, so and this lives inside lambda j omega. Okay, all right. So what we've done is we've we've rescaled so that the, the singular point can't either disappear into the origin or disappear to infinity, and so then we want to pass the limit. So sorry, this is this is lambda j sigma, which is converging to c. So what I want to do here is pass this picture the limit. So in the limit, I get, I get exactly the cone. And I have this set omega c, which is supposed to be the one side of the cone. Remember that that's where the, the sigma j's are living. And then I have some surface, sigma tilde and x tilde. Okay, so the first observation is x tilde is in the singular set. Tilde, and this is by Allard. Okay, because if x tilde was, was smooth, so that's the limit of, of these singular points, because if x tilde was smooth, then singular can't converge to smooth. Okay, so singular has to converge to singular. And moreover, this, this distance is one. Okay, so this tells us, first of all, sigma tilde is contained in omega c. So it's contained in the, the one side of the cone. You might be worried that it's, it, it could be contained in the closure. Okay, But in fact, well, the if it, if it touched c, So you don't actually need to take the closure because if the two surfaces touched, they would make one-sided contact. And so then the strong maximum principle as usual would tell you that they had to agree. But that would mean that the cone had a singular point, a distance one from the origin. But all points for the cone are, are right. If, you know, if these two are the same, then this would also be a singular point for the cone, but it's a distance one from the origin. We've assumed that doesn't happen, okay? So great. So, okay, but now we claim that we can classify such sigma tilde. Right? So this is the idea of hardened sign. Okay, so if you remember, So when we had the Simons cone, we had such an example of a minimal surface lying on one side of the cone. These are what we call S plus or minus, but these S plus or minus were completely regular. Okay. And this is sort of the, the, the great idea of Hart and Simon is that, well, for a general area minimizing cone, not only do such surfaces exist, but they're also the unique surfaces on either side. Okay, so let me state this. Okay, so take a set of finite parameter, locally finite parameter, whose boundary is an area minimizing cone, then there exists a smooth star-shaped area minimizing hypersurface 
S contained in So this is the first part. This is existence to any area minimizing hypersurface in omega C is lambda S for some lambda bigger than zero. Okay. So I should also say that lambda S converges to the cone as lambda goes to zero. So this theorem, which I don't have time to prove today, but this theorem is really you know, a remarkable result because it completely finishes the proof of the result above. And so the, the, let me just explain why, how this works. So you should um, return here. So we have this sigma tilde. Sigma tilde lies on one side of the cone and it's area minimizing because it's a limit of area minimizing surfaces. And it has a singular point, okay? And it's not the cone. But this can't happen because this result of Hart-Simon says that any area minimizing hypersurface, and you know, I should add even singular contained on one side of the cone. So that means living in this set omega C is a scaling of this smooth surface S that they constructed. Okay, so that this result is, is really nice and it, it, it shows you how you, you complete this, this sort of contradiction argument. Okay, so the, in, in a, just a sentence, so classify entire area minimizing on either side of area minimizing regular cone. Okay, so that's exactly what, what Hart and Simon do. And the key thing they, they, they get is that those, such surfaces are completely regular, even if you, you a priori were wondering if they would be, if they would be um, singular. And so, okay, so using this, Hart and Simon, Gamma six in R eight, generic solution to the plateau problem right so you find that the surface is, is hypersurface whose least with least area among all hypersurfaces with boundary gamma, the, this hypersurface will be smooth. Okay. And we've seen that th this doesn't hold for all gamma. So you have to do some perturbation. Okay. So let me not say exactly what, what generic means here. And by using the, the work of Hart and Simon, uh, Nate Smale is able to show the similar thing in the homo homological sense. So if you have a, a closed smooth manifold, there for a generic Riemannian metric on that manifold, um, for all homology classes, there exists sigma in the L in the class smooth with least area. So for all homology classes, there exists a sigma in, in alpha, which is smooth, and it has least area among all representatives. Okay. Okay. So um, what I'd like to talk about in the remaining parts of this lecture are, are sort of 
generalizations, which some conjectural, some, some results that you could try to extend Hardin's time. And so I think you, you, um, the first obvious question, right, is whether or not Hardin's time is going to work in higher dimensions. And so this would be very nice if you could extend to higher dimensions, because in high dimensions, the singular set of a, a minim, uh, area minimizing surface could be very complicated. And so it, in it use, when you have geometric applications or uh, topological applications of minimal surfaces, comparison geometry, et cetera, the singular set can play a really annoying role. So for example, um, in the Shane and Yao proof, the positive mass theorem, there's been a lot of work recently. Um, it's been resolved, but there's been a lot of work put into understanding the singular set in high dimensions. Um, so essentially, uh, Hart and Simon in high dimensions is mostly open. So, so let's. So the first question you might ask is, does the, the sort of the key input of Hart and Simon carry over to higher dimensions? So does, if you have a, a cone in Rn plus one, it should be area minimizing, does there exist a smooth minimal surface on, uh, smooth area minimizing surface on either side? And is it unique? Okay. Um, so here, So for example, if you take a cone cross R, so it's a regular cone, then you can take this the full a leaf of the foliation, cross it with R, um, and you can ask if that is the unique surface up to scaling on one side of the cone cross R. And in, in some in some settings, certain results have been, have been obtained in this special case. But even in this case, in general, it is not known if what the area minimizing surface is on one side of a regular cone cross R. And so even if you knew how to do this, I'm, I think that it wouldn't be quite enough to understanding the, the true generic regularity, but you can ask is generic for area minimizing hypersurfaces in R n plus one or I dimensional manifolds. Right, so there, there's, I, there's either the um, hard simon version where you consider the plateau problem and wiggle the boundary, or there's the, the smale version where you wiggle the metric. And um, I don't think that it's clear that the first result would necessarily imply the second result, but you can hope that the first result is at least a step in the right direction. But to the best of my knowledge, these two questions are essentially open, largely open. Okay, so the second thing I want to talk about is min-max. Okay, and so essentially the question here is can we can the area minimizing hypothesis? Okay, so the the Everything that I've talked about up until now, except for the, the monotonicity formula and whatnot, was focused on area minimizing surfaces, so surfaces with least area in their homology class or relative to their boundary. But in many cases, no such surface exists. So for example, Right, if, if the nth homology class of an n plus one, a compact n plus one manifold is zero, so. So for example, the sphere, right? Then there's no homology class in which to minimize. Right? There's no homology class. Oh, 
Okay, so in such a manifold, well, you can ask like, do there even exist minimal surfaces at all? Okay, and so instead of minimizing, so minimizing isn't really gonna work. And so you have to use what you, you might call mountain pass. Okay, so you have to use mountain pass or, or min max methods. Okay, and so the definitive result, I guess, in this result in this direction, at least in the setting that I stated, So if you take a closed Riemannian manifold, then there exists a minimal hypersurface. Right, so there's embedded submanifold, compact embedded submanifold, uh, minimal in the metric with respect to the metric. And moreover, So in the low dimensions, sigma is smooth. This minimal, minimal hypersurface you found via min max is smooth. In dimensions, where the ambient dimension is eight, so the surface has dimension seven, then there could be singularities. We already saw this happens in the uh, minimizing case. And then the higher dimensions, exactly as before, the singular set has Hausdorff dimension at most n minus seven. Okay. So um, the really surprising thing here, I think, is that actually you're getting you end up with regularity, which is as good as the area minimizing case. And not only, you know, not only do you have this regularity, but you, you have existence, right? So this, this surface exists. Okay. And so um, I, I won't go through the, there's been many, many results uh, about this topic. And so I have, I'll post in, along with these, these recordings, uh, some lecture notes and those notes, there'll be a full kind of discussion of, results, particularly in the singular, in the singular dimension. Um, so I'm not going to go through all the, the, the work that's been done in this dire direction, but let me just say the following. So if you remember when n equals seven and h and m, m sorry. So when, eight, when the seven dimensional homology of eight manifold is non-zero, right? Well, snail, told us the following, it says that there exists a metric G, well, not only there exists, but for generic G can minimize So you can choose a non-zero homology class if it exists. Um, you minimize in that class after choosing a generic metric, then the, the resulting surface will be smooth. So this was Smale's application of Hart-Simon theory. But what about, about, right? So what in the case like the sphere where there, you, you have no seven homology? Seven dimensional homology. Right? Can we still find sigma seven smooth minimal sur hypersurface? Okay. Okay. And so you, it may be unclear sort of how, you know, in, in which direction is this, this question going to go. So maybe it's just a direct application of Hart-Simon or sort of Smale's version of Hart-Simon to the, the omrin pitts and uh, setting. But here's the issue. So is that it's that regularity for min-max 
is based on stable theory. This means second variation, right? So the, the Morse index of the, the critical point is zero, right? But stable critical points may not be global minimums. And so Hart and Simon is based on minimizing Okay, and so it may not seem like the, the bridge is so great, but actually this is a really, really fundamental issue um, in trying to attack this problem. And so just a quick example. So you can, you can kind of modify the, um, the uh, Simon's cone construction and consider the following cone. And so this cone turns out to be stable, but only minimizes area to one side. Okay. Um, and so this shows you that on the other side, the side that it's not minimizing, the Hart Simon theory doesn't exist. And so you need a new way to attack this, this sort of regularity. And so um, recently, so if Genny and Luca, we proved that in So we showed that you can modify the min-max construction and find a, a, a minimal hypersurface. It attains the width, so there's a possible. So there's some possibility of multiplicity, but I'm just going to ignore that in this talk. And so it attains the width. It only has isolated singularities. And moreover, you get the following estimate. So normally, for a one parameter min max, you would hope that the Morse index, the surface is at most one. Right? So this is the usual thing you expect from Morse theory. But what we show is that you can add to this estimate the count of the singular points, which are not area minimizing. Right? And so these are the points where you can't apply hard. So, okay. so this, is 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 useful because what you can do is then so at the at the, the singular points where it is error minimizing in a certain sense then you can apply a, a ad hoc version of of Hart and Simon and obtain the following Okay. okay, and so if you have positive reg, then you can always perturb the metrics so that there exists a smooth minimal hypersurface. And the, the, the explanation for this is that when you have positive Ricci, then 
here the index has to be at least one. So there's no singularities that are not area minimizing. And you can, you can apply this ad hoc smoothing at every point and smooth it out and you get a smooth middle hypersurface. In general, right? So in general, we don't know if there exists these non-area minimizing singularities, but you, uh, you can have only at most one in this construction. So you can, So in general, after G, there exists sigma with at most one single point. Okay. Okay, so based on this, it was still uh, unknown if you could actually get rid of that final singular point. And there was really nice recent work of Li and Wang, Yang Ang Li and Zihao Wang. Um, so, sorry, so Yang Ang Li and Zihan Wang proved that a generic on closed. And so, um, so they proved that, that in general, even you can get rid of this last singular point. And so I don't quite have time to go through the, the, the whole, the details of their proof, but essentially the idea is you, you look at the, the, the surface sigma uh, obtained in, in, in our theorem, then you perturb the metric a bit more and you study what happens as the, as the, the surfaces in the new metric converge back to the, the old metric. So it's, it's sort of similar to the, uh, kind of vaguely similar to the idea of Hart Simon. And you so said you do further uh, so the uh, part of the input is is linear theory developed by Zihan. Um, and so as sigma t converges back. And so then you have to have a delicate argument based on some singularities disappearing, some of them reappearing, because it doesn't seem like you can do a one-sided perturbation. Um, and but that that's generally the idea of, of this proof. Okay. Um, and so I'll just close this this lecture with a few questions. So, So um, there's a sort of a competing question or competing theory of, of min-max um, using the Allen Kahn PDE. And so you might hope that you could prove this sort of result using Allen Kahn. And the, the, the provenance for that is so. Uh, on surfaces, actually, a surprisingly, a, a similar thing thing happens. So on surfaces, well, certain tangent cones could be stable, but not area minimizing, because you could just take two crossing lines. And of course, this is stable because they're straight lines, but that you can always decrease the area like that. And so in uh, min-max theory, you you're always worried that these sorts of tangent cones could, could arise when you're working on the surface. And so Kalabi and, and Sao proved that in the Omgren Pitts theory, they don't arise. And recently Mantelitis sort of discovered a way in Alan Kahn to give a different proof of this result. And so it would be interesting to understand if that, that kind of approach could work using Alan Kahn here. Um, and similarly, 
do there exist stable cones in R8, not minimizing on either side. Okay. And you know, if they do, so if they do occur, can they can they occur in min-max? And so on surfaces, you can draw sort of a starfish type metric on the sphere. And then you can find out that the min-max surface is a figure eight. Okay, and it does have a tangent cone of this kind. All right, and so then you can ask, um, various other questions. So can you find infinitely many smooth mineral surfaces in eight dimensions? Um, and are the surfaces uh, constructed in the, these results always min-max, right? Because these, they're, these surfaces are always constructed sort of by hand smoothing out the metric and the surface. Um, but are they actually, you know, the result of, of a min-max procedure after you perturb the metric? Right. So I'll, I'll stop here with, with this lecture. But then in my final lecture, I'll talk more about the generic regularity of minimizers and a bit about mean curvature flow.